Hello, this is the 15th video on my multivariable calculus class. In this video, we're going to talk about normal lines and tangent planes, and then we're going to talk about the tangent plane approximation. So in the previous video, we talked about normal lines uh, to level surfaces and to level curves. We showed that the normal line to a level surface or level curve is gradient. Now, if you put together all those uh, curves, the tangents to the curves, then we would get a vector called the gradient vector that is perpendicular to all of the tangents to the curve to the surface so in other words if you look at these uh, curves that are on the surface then tangents are all perpendicular to the gradient so gradient vector would be the normal to the surface so let's do an example on this we want to find equations of the line normal and the plane tangent to the ellipsoid at 1, negative 1, 1. So our function is 4x squared plus 9y squared plus z squared. And we want to find the normal and, um, and tangent plane. So first we're going to find the gradient of that. So gradient would be 8x, 18y, and 2z. We are going to evaluate the gradient at the point that they gave us, 1, negative 1, 1. And by the way, notice that 1, negative 1, 1 does satisfy this equality because that gives you 4 times 1 plus 9 times 1 plus 1. And that is in fact 14. So this point is on the surface as it should be. So let's evaluate this. This would be 8, negative 18, and 2. Now this line... Uh, that we are looking for, the normal line, would have to have this point, uh, this vector, as its direction vector. So if I were to graph this one, this is an ellipsoid, and we're taking one point on this ellipsoid, so it doesn't really matter what point it is, and then we're trying to find this normal line to the surface, to the uh, level surface, and we're also going to find the tangent plane. So in order to find a line, we need a point on the line and we need a vector in the direction of the line. So the line would be given as, so x equals, the point on the line is 1, negative 1, and 1. And the direction vector is 8, negative 18, and 2. So this is the line, the normal line to the surface. And what about the tangent plane? Well, for the tangent plane, we will do a, which is 8, times x minus 1, plus b times y minus minus 1, plus c times z minus 1 equal to 0. So this is the equation of the tangent plane, and this one is an equation of the normal line. Okay, let's do one more example. Find all points on the surface for which the tangent plane is parallel or identical to the plane x plus y plus z equals 1. So when are two planes parallel or identical? Well, two planes are parallel when they have the same normal vector or the normal vectors are perpendicular to, or pa are parallel to each other. So what is the normal vector to the plane that they gave us? Well, normal vector is i plus j plus k. So that's the normal vector to this plane. Now normal vector to the tangent plane would be gradient. So if I call this x, f of x, y, z as x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3 x, y, z, then the normal vector would be the gradient. So gradient would be 3 x squared plus 0 plus 0 plus 3 y, z and then 3y squared plus 3xz, and finally 3z squared plus 3xy. In order for these two planes to be parallel or identical, we would need to make sure that the vectors are in fact parallel, the normal vectors are parallel. So what we need is this, we need this one to be c times i plus j plus k. So what does it mean? It means the three components here are all going to be equal to c. So 3x squared plus 3yz 
would have to be c. 3y squared plus 3xz would also have to be c, and 3z squared plus 3xy would also have to be c. So now we can eliminate c by saying that these three things are equal. So 3x squared plus 3yz is equal to 3y squared plus 3xz, and 3x squared plus 3yz is going to be 3z squared plus 3xy. Let's just start from the first equation. The first equation can be simplified. We're going to divide by 3, and we're going to take everything to the same side. So we get x squared minus y squared plus yz minus xz equals 0. The second one, we get something similar, x squared minus z squared plus yz minus xy equals 0. Both of these equations can be factored. Well, this one is x minus y times x plus y. This one has a factor of z, so we get x minus y times x plus y plus z times y minus x equals 0. The bottom one can also be simplified, factored as x minus y x plus x plus uh, x minus z x plus z plus y times z minus x equals 0. Now we see that there's a factor of x minus y from the top and x minus z from the bottom. So we get x minus y times x plus y and then minus z. That's equal to 0. And at the bottom we get x minus z times x plus z minus y. That's also equal to 0. Now, product of two things uh, is 0 if both of them are 0 or at least one of them is 0. So that means x equals y or x plus y equals z. From the bottom we get x equals z or x plus z equals y. Now in order to solve this one we'll have to take a few cases. So case one is if x equals y, so we have this one, and we have this one, and x equals z. So in this case the normal vectors are in fact parallel. Let's take this and plug it into the equation that they gave us. In that case, we're going to get x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3xyz equals 6. So what we get is we get x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus 3x cubed equals 6. And that gives us 6x cubed equals 6, which means x equals 1. So the point that we get is going to be 1, 1, 1. So at this point, the tangent is in fact parallel to the plane that they gave us. It could also be identical to that plane because what we really showed was that the normal vectors are parallel. So in a rare case, it, it's possible that the uh, plane is in fact identical to the tangent plane. The second case is if x is equal to y. And so we have this one and we have this one. x plus z is equal to y. So x plus z is equal to y. So this tells us that x equals y and z equals 0. We'll take that and plug it into the equation that they gave us. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3xyz equals 6. Well, we get 2x cubed equals 6 that gives us x cubed equals 3, which means x is equal to cube root of 3. So what does that mean? It means it gives us cube root of 3, cube root of 3, and 0 as the second point. Okay, so let's look at the next case. So what is the next case? We are done with the case when x is equal to y. So if we look at this, we have x plus y equals z and x equals z. So let's write that down. So x plus y equals z and x equals z. Now what does this give us? This gives us that y would have to be 0. We'll take that and plug it into the equation that we have. We have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3xyz which is 0 equals 6. So that gives us 2x cubed equals 6 which gives us x equals cube root of 3. So this gives us cube root of 3, 0, and cube root of 3. So that's the second, uh, that's the third point.
Finally, and this was case three, finally we have case four, which is the other two things that we are given. So x plus y equals z and x plus z equals y. So x plus y equals z and x plus z equals y. I believe that's what we got. Okay, so we're going to take that and solve for x, y, z and see what we get. So I'm going to take the top one, plug it into the bottom one, so we get x plus x plus y equals y. That tells me that x equals z, but if x equals, uh, zero, sorry, x equals zero, but if x is equals zero, y equals z. So what we get is this, we get zero cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus three xyz equals six. So that means, and this is y cubed, so that means y would have to be cube root of three. Now y and z are the same and x is zero. So the point would be zero, cube root of three, cube root of three. So in fact, we have four points, this point, this point, this point, and one, one, one. These four points that the tangent plane is either parallel to I plus, x plus y plus z equals one or perhaps identical. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is how do we use tangent plane uh, tangent planes to approximate functions. This is something that you have seen for single variable calculus, uh, for si single variable functions in terms of uh, tangent line approximation. So imagine you have a line given by y equals f of x and you know the value of this line at some point x naught. So you know x naught f of x naught, that's easy to find, and you're trying to approximate f of x at some point near this. So what do we do? We approximate that using the tangent line. So we write down the equation of the tangent line. The equation of the tangent line is y equals f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. And this is called the uh, point slope formula. So this might be a little bit of a more familiar way of uh, writing it down. And that means f of x, which is this value, this value is f of x, is approximately this quantity, which can be evaluated using this formula. And that gives us the tangent line approximation. Now, if you look at the graph of a function f of xy, you can write it down as z equals f of xy, which can be written as f of xy minus z equals zero. We can write down the equation of the normal, uh, find a normal vector to that uh, surface, and find the equation of the tangent plane. So normal vector to that surface is given as, we'll have to take the derivative of this one with respect to x. Derivative of f with respect to x is just f sub x. Derivative of that with respect to y is f sub y, and derivative of that with respect to z. Well, this one doesn't have any x, uh, doesn't have any z in there, so derivative of f of x y becomes zero with respect to z, and derivative of negative z with respect to z is negative one. So this would be the gradient of this side. So this is going to be the gradient of f of x y minus z. So that means the equation of the tangent plane can be written as well, the normal vector is fx, fy, negative 1. So we get normal vector and then multiplied by x minus x naught, y minus y naught, z minus z naught equals 0. So that's the equation of the tangent plane. If we solve that, we're going to get z equals f of x naught, y naught plus f sub x times x naught, x minus x naught, and y, y, uh, f sub y times y minus y naught, which means f of x y can be approximated by f of x naught y naught plus f sub x times x naught x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught. A similar formula is valid for functions of three variables. So f of x y z can be approximated by f of x naught y naught z naught plus f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times x minus x naught plus f sub z times x minus x naught, or z minus z naught. Okay, so let's do an example on this one. We want to approximate this uh, quantity using tangent plane approximation. Well, let's just start defining a function. So the most natural function for this problem would be cube root of x cubed plus y. 
and let's write down a point, find a point close to the point that we are given that the value of this function is easy to, is easy to evaluate. And these are pretty obvious what we need to take. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to take the partials of this function at uh, the point that we are given, and then at the point that we found, and then we're going to use the tangent plane approximation. So let's first find the partials. Well, if we do f sub x, that would be 1 third x cubed plus y to the power of negative 2 thirds times 3x squared. And f sub y would be 1 third x cubed plus y to the power of negative 2 thirds times the derivative of inside, which is just 1. Now we're going to plug in the values. So f sub x at 0, 1 would be, well, x is 0. So when you substitute 0 here, you get 0. So this one doesn't even matter. So that would be 0. f sub y is going to be 1 third times 0 cubed plus 1 to the power of negative 2 thirds. So that is 1 third. And we also need f of 0, 1. That's cube root of 0 cubed plus 1, which is 1. So that means f of 0 0.01 comma 0 0.97 is equal to f of 0 comma 1 plus 1, which is 1. So this one is f of 0 comma 1 plus f sub x, which is 0. So this one is f sub x at 0 comma 1 times x, which is 0 0.01 minus x naught. So this is x minus x naught. And then we have one more term similar to this one, plus one third. This one is f sub y at 0, 1 times y minus y naught. y is 0 0.97 and y naught is 1. So finally, we can simplify this to get an approximation for the value. So it would be 1, this, this is 0, plus one third times negative 0 0.03. And that would be 0.99. Okay, so this is an approximation for the uh, quantity that they gave us. Let's do one more example on this. This one is a an example that is best to use a function of three variables. So the simplest approach would be to take square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The point that we're going to use that is close to this and the value of the function at that point is very easy to evaluate is 3, 0, 4. So we're going to evaluate f sub x. f sub x would be 1 half x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power of negative 1 half times the derivative of inside, which is x over root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, we're going to have to find the derivative of this from respect to y, but this is symmetric, so the derivative would be almost the exact same thing, except x and y would have to be swapped. And finally, the derivative with respect to z is also the exact same thing, except for the x and z that would have to be swapped. Okay, so these are the initial values we'll have to find. Then we have to find f of the point that we approximated so f of 0, 3, 0, 4, that would be square root of 9 plus 0 plus 16, and that is root 25, which is 5. Next, we're going to evaluate all of these partials at the given point, at the approximated point. So this would be x over 5. x is 3, and root x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is 5. Then we do f sub y at 3, 0, 4, 3, 0, 4 is y, which is 0, over 5, and finally f sub z at 3, 0, 4, which is 4 over 5. So next we're going to plug in the values into the formula, and that's basically it. So we had 3.01, I believe. Let me go back and take a look. Then we had 0 0.01, and finally we had 3.99. So this is approximately f of 304. So f of 304 
we evaluated that as 5 plus f sub x times x minus x naught plus f sub y times y minus y naught plus f sub z times z minus z naught. So this would be 5 plus, let's evaluate this, this is 3 fifth times 0 0.1 plus 4 fifth times negative 0 0.01. 5 and then minus 1 fifth times 0 0.01 so this would be 5 minus 0 point, so we're going to have to divide that by 5, and uh, that would give us 0 0.002. So that means the uh, approximation for the um, expression that they gave us is 4.998. So that is an approximation. To summarize, what we did was we know that the normal vector to a level curve or level surface is gradient, and of course, the tangent plane can be used to approximate a function. I will see you in the next video.